I'll give, give you a brief overview of the project improvements that are underway. Uh, and then I'll turn it over to the contractor who's going to go through the status update and um, the current and upcoming street closures that are going to be impacting traffic flow in and around the community. Uh, and then uh, project look ahead, what's coming in the next few months and upwards, I guess, through all of 2014. And then we'll take any questions that you may have at the end. This is a picture of the Washington Boulevard Bridge before we began construction. It certainly doesn't look like this today. And this is what we're hoping it will look like when it's completed. This is an artist's rendering of the architectural treatments that are being added to the bridge, the new bridge, most of which you can see if you're traveling westbound on Columbia Pike and going underneath the bridge. Uh, most of the northbound bridge has been completed. The bridge will be named the Freedman's Village Bridge uh, out of a grassroots effort from the Bridge Working Group, a group of citizens that participated with us in the determination of some of the design features on the bridge. And we had an architect on board who designed and put to paper what we had envisioned as a group. Any questions on this before? I don't want to go too quickly. The final configuration is a similar handout to what you have today in your hands, um, except that this is in color. Unfortunately, I didn't have access to a color printer to print that out. Uh, we're doing a couple things that are somewhat unique. We're realigning ramps and adding traffic signals along Columbia Pike. I'm going to start in the east side and work our way west. We're realigning what we call Ramp D. It's the Washington Boulevard north or west, whichever direction you want to call it. Uh, what used to come up and only could make a right-hand turn to go eastbound on Columbia Pike, it has already been relocated and realigned opposite of South Orm Street, and a traffic signal has been installed. So now you can come straight through to the Sheraton Hotel uh, or take a right or left from that ramp. Now, not all movements may have been open just yet, but they will be uh, ultimately. So you'll be able to take a left or right onto Columbia Pike from that ramp. Ramp C is going to be in a sim similar configuration. This is the eastbound Columbia Pike to northbound or westbound Washington Boulevard. Uh, that loop ramp is about the same size as the old one was. It's currently closed and being reconstructed. Uh, and it's also be it's having to be reconstructed so that it can elevate and grade to get up over the new bridge. Uh, ramps A and B on the northeast side of the interchange are being widened uh, and brought a little bit closer to the Sheraton Hotel. Ramp B in particular is coming off of Washington Boulevard in a similar fashion as it does today, but it will widen out to two lanes and will be assisted by a traffic signal to help dissipate the queues coming from that ramp onto westbound Columbia Pike. What does that mean, dissipate the queues? Help um, traffic get through that traffic signal so that they're not sitting waiting on the ramp. Does that make sense? So it, opens, so it comes off of Washington Boulevard as a single lane, just as soon as it comes through the curve, it widens out to two. And then there will be a traffic signal that will turn green and allow both lanes to turn right onto Columbia Pike. Will that still be a right turn only? Right turn only. Okay. Yes, sir. So two lanes will turn right. If you find that it backs up, like the ramp that goes off of, um, it goes down to Glebe Road where those apartment complexes are, and the traffic backs up into 95, will you change it somehow? We have analyzed this configuration with future forecast volumes all the way out to 2034, 30, 32, 34. Uh, we found that there were no queues that back up beyond the ramp, that it will be handled by the traffic signal. Now, the traffic signal at the ramps A and B is only going to be a half signal, so it will only control the ramp, ramp B and the westbound Columbia Pike. So if you're traveling eastbound Columbia Pike, you will never be stopped by a traffic light at that particular location. You will have the traffic signal at South Orm Street to, to address, uh, but at least that ramp, that those ramps will only control, the signal will only control the ramp B and Columbia Pike westbound. Okay? <coughs> so that too helps keep traffic moving. Uh, we are replacing the uh, single bridge with uh, two side-by-side -side bridges. So what's already been open to traffic to the northbound direction of Washington Boulevard is the new northbound bridge. Uh, eventually, and we'll talk about this in a few, we'll get all of the traffic off of the existing bridge and demolish it and build the other adjacent bridge that will carry all of southbound traffic. And I wish I had a laser pointer saw. So this bridge on this side, east side, has already been constructed. We're going to be starting this one next year. 
Yes, sir. The elevation from the north side of the bridge going towards Fort Mile, Grant B, is that the elevation that that, that is going to stay at what it is now? No. It's going to be reconstructed in its permanent configuration also as part of an upcoming stage of construction. But what I'm saying, will the grade change? Because right now you've got a, a slope there, a real dangerous slope, especially when it's wet. And a very sharp curve there. Once we have it in the final configuration, you will have a little bit more of a mile curve. Right now it is a little bit tighter because we need to put all four lanes of 27 on the Northbound Bridge temporarily while we demolish the existing bridge and build uh, the Southbound Bridge. But in the final configuration, you'll have you'll have more room. You'll have an acceleration, deceleration lane on the bridge for the ramps, so it will be a lot easier to exit there. Right now, there's no deceleration lane. Have to can exit I, pretty can quick I make a comment too? Mm -hmm. When you, when you take that exit to that lamp, please, it's really not well marked and it comes up on the really fast. Yeah. I mean, all of a sudden, we were gone a week and came back and I was like, wait a second, where's the, where's the exit? And then we, we saw it just before we got to it. Your sign is just before you turn. Right. And you can almost miss it. That yeah. yeah. Uh, unfortunately, because the bridge is right at the end of the bridge. Really nowhere else. There's no room to put any signs in the shoulder there. So even in advance, saying exit ramp, you know, kind of or something. Or we can look into that. You know, some advanced signage, but there's there's limited room, as you well know. And, you know, the traffic coming up there. Eventually, there'll be an overhead sign there, so it'll be right. a little bit larger, so you'll be able to see it from further further away. So that'll help you. Yeah, we almost missed it. Yeah, it does come up on you quick, and it's hard to see it. We have a slide later in the presentation, too, with some additional colors that will help depict exactly where the ultimate configuration of the ramp will be relative to what it is now. So it will show just how tight it looks now compared to what it will be when it gets finally constructed. Um, in the northwest quadrant, you'll see a loop. It's called ramp F, I think. I don't know if it's actually labeled on your sheet. Um, but there's a loop ramp in the northwest quadrant that will be eliminated altogether with the new configuration. And the directional ramp, ramp G, which is adjacent to it right now, comes to the traffic signal at South Quinn Street. That's going to get realigned and brought over opposite of South Queen Street, and that intersection will be signalized. So instead of coming straight down Washington Boulevard, getting off at Columbia Pike and going straight across to Quinn, you'll come down Washington Boulevard, get off at the ramp, and go straight across to Queen Street. We did that for a couple of reasons. Um, Operationally, we know that most of the traffic in the mornings are going to ramp E. Um, we know that a lot of, um, a lot fewer people are actually using the loop ramp F and instead making a U-turn to get onto ramp E, which is the directional ramp that'll take you to 395 north and south, and then also Washington Boulevard eastbound or southbound in that particular um, quadrant. Uh, so we felt it would be better if we actually made it a dedicated left turn and signalize it for that purpose so that it will make it safer for all of the turning maneuvers that occur at the South Queen Street intersection. And believe it or not, with this configuration, we helped to keep traffic flowing much better than if we had done nothing at all and left all of the ramps in, in the original configuration. So the signal at Queen Street will move to Queen. It will be fully accessible. We, are, we managed to keep Queen Street open. That was one of the things that we did not think was possible with our early design, and this design's been underway since 1996. Uh, we thought we were gonna have to close Queen Street, but we heard from the community, and especially the bridge working group, the representatives from the community, just how critical it is to keep South Queen Street open. Uh, we thought also by signalizing it, we're gonna be addressing a lot of the safety concerns at that particular intersection. So when you say keep it open, it's gonna be two-way traffic? Yes. It will be fully accessible, just as it is today, but we'll have a traffic signal. And when it goes green for the Queen Street motorists, they will have their own green, so they're not going to be competing with the ramp traffic. Today, if you're familiar with the intersection at Quinn Street, if you're coming through from the ramp, both directions, Quinn Street and the ramp, are going at the same time. And so if you're turning left, you have to make sure that the person opposite you also has their signal on, indicating that they're turning left so that you don't collide with one another. When we move the traffic signal to South Queen Street, Queen Street will have its own green time, not to compete with any other motorist turning at the same time. At South, yes, sir. Uh, uh, Eggers in South Queen Street, can you still make a right-left turn 
on to come your pride. Yes, sir. Okay. That was also an important element that we heard from the community is that we had to keep that fully accessible both to the ramp and to Columbia Pike. Mm -hmm. At South Quinn Street, because of all of our consolidating the traffic over to South Queen Street, we're actually going to be restricting the maneuvers at that intersection, allowing only the eastbound right turn to enter onto Quinn Street. So you will no longer be able to leave the community out of Quinn Street when the project is finished. We'll keep that signal operational until we need to get the new signal in place for Queen Street, and then we will go ahead and restrict the maneuvers at Quinn Street. We believe that will address some of the safety concerns of that intersection as well. We understand even with the traffic signal, there's a lot of red light runners, a lot of angle crashes that occur at that intersection. By restricting the maneuvers, we believe we're going to help eliminate some of the safety concerns there at that intersection as well. So, so you're saying that Quinn, South Quinn. South Quinn. Q-U-I-N-N, yes. <laughs> Quinn Street, right turn right. entrance only. Right turn only. You can't, you can't go from Quinn north on Correct. To, to Columbia Pike. Correct. O only, only go south. Only turn in and go south. One way south. Yes, sir. I see. We know that the community is concerned about somewhat restricting that maneuver, and we're also, or the entrances onto Quinn Street, <clears throat> and had asked that we considered also signalizing South Rolf Street. It is not in the limits of our project. We are not going to be evaluating that as part of our project. The county is fully aware of the concerns, and they have agreed that they will come out next spring and do another signal warrant analysis after we, or, well, they'll start next spring, but they'll continue it every year until we're finished with our project, and they have an opportunity to figure out whether or not, indeed, that intersection meets the warrants to receive a traffic signal. So it is on our radar. We are aware of it. The county is aware of it. Uh, it will continue to be studied in the future. And how long is that period? You say, when is this anticipated? We're going to go into that in just a moment. Oh. So we're going to go over the overall schedule, when we, what we're doing, major stages upcoming, and the end of completion. Uh, yes, one other question. Uh, going westbound from your back at the light at Queen, is that a dedicated left turn lane there? Yes, sir. You'll have a dedicated left turn to turn on to Queen Street or to make some, the somewhat U-turn to get on to the ramp to go to 395. That will be a legal maneuver and a dedicated left turn. So you'll have the green light again without opposing traffic to contend with. Where are pedestrians crossing it? They're not, uh, they may not be shown clearly on here. I don't know if we have payment markings also highlighted. We don't. Uh, but we do have uh, push button signals for pedestrians at all three of the signalized intersections. On um, Quinn Street, of course, it will be unsignalized, but they'll be able to walk across the single lane, only having to look over their shoulder to see if any cars are turning into Quinn. At the Queen Street intersection, there will be a crosswalk across Queen Street and across Ramp E, and on the east side of the intersection um, of Columbia, so, so Columbia Pike, there will also be a pedestrian crosswalk uh, to the north side of Columbia Pike, and then another crosswalk across the realigned Ramp G. So you'll have access to all corners of that intersection through pedestrian crosswalks with push buttons. Across ramps A and B, there will also be another push button pedestrian signal. And uh, ramp C will have a crosswalk, but it is not signalized. Again, you'll just have to contend with the right turning maneuvers uh, to be able to walk across that ramp. And then uh, South Orm Street, the signal there has crosswalks, again, I believe, across the realigned ramp D on the east side of the intersection, and then back across towards the Sheraton. Is, is there only a no turn on red coming up from Queen Street onto the ramp E? Yes, sir. There will be no right turn on red permitted onto that ramp, primarily for pedestrian safety, but also because we don't want people trying to contend with the speeding, or potentially speeding traffic that we know a lot of folks come down the hill at a pretty good clip and then go right up to the ramp. So if the light's green there, we want to make sure that we don't <coughs> add to potential for collisions at that intersection. So no right turn onto either Rampy or Columbia Pike from the signalized intersection at South Queen. Okay. Hmm. You'll still be able to go right out of Roth Street any time of day you want to. Um, at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Joe McGuire with Shirley Contracting. He's our uh, construction manager. Uh, my name's Joe McGuire. Uh, Construction manager, uh, was team, you know, 
going to be going through a few things of where we're at with the job right now and some of the things that are going to be upcoming in the next few months and years. Um, so status update right now, um, we have in the last uh, few months, we have Ram D realigned to South Orm Street and a new traffic signal installed. Uh, waterline relocation along Columbia Pike is currently underway and will be continuing uh, in the next year. The sanitary sewer work is also uh, started uh, last month in November, and the work down along the, the creek next to Carrington Village um, has been mostly completed along Long Branch and up to South Queen Street. Uh, we are currently working in South Queen Street right now with the sewer work. Uh, 327 southbound at Canyon Wall uh, is underway. All the concrete's been poured. I'm sure everyone has seen that, and we'll be continuing to do the uh, widening along southbound 27 adjacent to that wall. And the northbound bridge deck has been poured, and uh, the bridge has been open to northbound traffic, so we switched that uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, this is a few photos of some of the work we just uh, went through. This is the signal that was just recently installed at South Orm Street and Ramp D. We're calling Ramp D on your diagram there, adjacent to the Sheridan. This is, uh, again, the same signal, the same intersection, looking at Ramp D. Um, and as Tina went over, you can now make a left-hand turn, go straight across Columbia Pike uh, to South Warren Street to access the, the Sheridan Hotel, or make a right. So you have the three lanes that are open there today. Um, and a, there's a crosswalk with pedestrian access there. This is the uh, southbound retaining wall that was just recently uh, poured out. Um, and like I said, we'll be uh, in there working to do the roadway widening. The road will be widened up against that wall uh, here shortly. Question, yeah. is that sure. going to be a sound barrier there too? There will be a sound wall uh, on top of that, that slope, uh, a little bit closer to the condos. That, that's later on? That is later on. That will be uh, late 2014. Uh, this is the recently completed northbound bridge. Um, and we have just recently switched traffic on that, so we do have traffic there now. Um, some of the upcoming street closures that uh, I'm sure everyone is curious about and to be aware of if you're traveling out from the intersection of some of the streets. Right now, we do have South Queen Street closed for the sanitary sewer work. Um, we do have traffic detoured over on uh, 12th Street if you're trying to come out to Quinn, to come out on Quinn. And obviously if you're trying to come in on Queen, we are directing people coming eastbound to use Rolfe and if you're coming westbound to use Quinn. Um, we do have signage up. Um, we've had some, I think, some concerns on that. We're trying to put some additional signage up just to make sure that everyone is well aware that Queen is closed prior to getting there to make sure that they know that they need to go down Quinn or walk to access uh, this neighborhood, this area. Um, that a question, what, what is the need for the sanitary sewer work, sewer work? We are replacing the existing sewer. There's two eight inch sewers on Columbia Pike and another, I believe it's a, a 12, that goes down to, towards the, new, the sewer, the existing sewer along the creek and continues out to the to treatment plant. We are putting in a new 24, 20 inch, and 12 inch sewer that's going to be replacing those two 8 inch sewers on Columbia Pike. So, all that work, uh, we'll go into a little more detail. We'll be continuing up Columbia Pike and we'll be tying into the existing sewers up by uh, Wall Street. Two, two reasons for that work age and condition of the sanitary sewer line, and secondarily because the county requested that we move it out of the way of the future streetcar. Uh, for, uh, the future no streetcar alignment. Oh. Um, as many of you may be the aware. Potential street. Yeah. The, I don't know why the sword's in the way of the streetcar. Um, the streetcar design would have the tracks set in a concrete bed, and they want all utilities to be out from underneath of that concrete pad uh, so that it could be accessible should there be any problems in the future with any of the utility lines. So they, as I mentioned, we're working with the county as partners on this project. So they had several requests as part of the scope of our project. One was to move all of the utilities out of the way of the future streetcar so that they wouldn't have to pay to move them after we've built our project. So, so you had Senator so it was underneath the road besides? It was down the right, the right turn. It was down the right lane of Columbia Pike 
and that's exactly where the streetcar is going to go. So they wanted us to move it out of out of the middle of Columbia Pike and under either the sidewalk or the additional space that we have adjacent. So where you see the hole dug right now for so is, is this the this sewer line below the level of the creek that's going to go through there? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it crosses under the creek. Below the level of the creek. Right. Right. Yeah, all the work adjacent to the creek has been done. Uh, we'll have to go back and do a few things along that slope and stuff to, to finish grading and uh, <coughs> stuff along the manholes. But all the pipe has been installed and tied into the existing sewer along the creek. So right now they're up at South Queen. But of course you have to build the culvert to come, to come through. That's correct. The box culvert will be later on. And that'll the box culvert will, will go over top of the sewer we just built. Okay. That's correct. Thank you. Sure. Um, the Queen Street closure, we anticipate to be up through the end of next week. Um, depending on weather, it may be a little longer, but hopefully by the end of next week, we will have Queen Street back open. Um, at that point, the sewer work will continue up Columbia Pike, um, outside of the roadway, and then a little bit into the right lane of the eastbound 244. And eventually, when we will get to Queen Street, uh, we will be doing a temp uh, partial closure of that intersection. Uh, at which point we will allow um, traffic to only exit Quinn Street onto 244. There will be no traffic allowed to enter uh, Quinn Street from 244 when we're doing the work in the intersection of Quinn and Columbia Pike for the sewer. Right now we're anticipating that's going to happen in uh, early January, and again that will be closed for approximately two weeks in that configuration. Um, we will have detours up, and I think we have a little diagram uh, with signage and stuff uh, indicating, you know, Quinn Street's closed and where traffic can go to get back to areas along in this neighborhood. Uh, the Columbia Pike detour, uh, we're going to be doing that a couple times here in 2014. It's the same detour we've had up a couple times already to, de to demolish the existing bridge and set structural steel um, so far on the northbound bridge. And, and those detours will be on, on the weekends only, like they were before. And we'll be detouring traffic up the, uh, we have a little diagram of this, up the temporary uh, asphalt with the light at 27. We'll be able to cross over 27, come back down uh, along ramps A and B next to the Sheridan there to get back to 244. And we anticipate three weekends in January uh, 2014 to do the demolition of the remaining bridge. And then uh, another weekend or two in the fall of 2014 to set the beams for the new southbound bridge. Any questions on that? And <clears throat> as already discussed, we just need to traffic down 12th Street to the south wind to get back to 244. So we have signage up, so I think everyone should be used to that. At this point, hopefully by, again, by the end of next week, we'll have Queen Street back, back up. Uh, we may be used to it, but it is a terrible hazard for someone trying to walk across there, especially after dark during this time of COVID. People are coming very close to getting hit because of all the traffic that is now uh, ingressing and egressing out of uh, Quinn Street. I, I had a friend to tell me it took her three traffic lights to cross walking. To cross to Columbia Pike? To cross Columbia Pike, yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we do have the pedestrian signal working at, at the signal there, so they should be able to hit the button and, and cross no, Columbia Pike. No, it's not working right then. That's a lot early in the morning, and it's, it's not working. Okay. I mean, you can hit the button, and it's still red going east-west, mm -hmm. but there's still a, no walking going north-south. Hmm. For yeah, the, to yeah, cross to cross, yeah. Okay, that's something we can look